everybody. Josh RV Nerd here with Vicious RV, taking a look at a compass, but not the magnetic north variety, more of the Thor uh, all-wheel drive variety here. Uh, this little model right here, it's a uh, Murphy bed in the slide kind of thing, which is kind of cool because during the day, the bed goes away. It's a mechanical Murphy bed also, not a powered Murphy bed, so it it's just quicker to operate, uh, which is kind of nice. And depending on the mattress you put in, not too heavy, but it also might be a little bit heavier. That's one of those things you'll have to kind of juggle. And giving you that good and bad info, or things to think about, things to make you go, hmm, that's what I want to do with this video. Uh, this rides on the Transit chassis from Ford, which means it has that 3.5 liter uh, EcoBoost V6. That's 310 horsepower. Now, uh, between the, the, the three most common Class B chassis right now, the Ford Transit, the Mercedes Sprinter, and the, uh, the Ram Promaster, this is personally, I think, my favorite to drive. And, it, you know, they're, they're all real close. The reason I say it, though, this is the most responsive of all of them. When you hit the accelerator, that motor moves. It goes where you tell it, when you tell it. Now, a little rig like this, like you don't want to tow a big thing. Backing up scares you. You don't want to drive a big, giant Class A. Something like this is basically like just driving an inflated van, which is probably why they call them van campers now that I think about it. I'm also uh, ashamed to admit how old I was when I realized it was called the 4th of July, but neither here nor there. This is just small, easy driving, easy going. Uh, you know, you can just pull into normal filling stations. You don't have to like get on some super map app and like figure out where you're gonna go. These have a, a onboard uh, gas generator as well. So you wanna pull into a park, you're good. You wanna, uh, you know, get away from people? Well, you can do that too. And it's got all the natural transfer switches, so no matter where you're at, what kind of power source you're throwing at it, it's gonna figure it all out. It's got some really cool points. It's got a couple of things that made me go, why didn't they do that or why did they do it this way? So we're gonna take a look at the good with the bad with everything in between. And I'd like to hear from you. What do you like? What do you dislike? And if you appreciate the fair look at this stuff, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Let's get in there. And I was, I was kind of trying to think like, how do I start inside of this one? I thought, you know, why not start right from the sofa? This right here is kind of where you're going to sit I would say put you in the driver's seat, but in a motorhome, that quite literally means something else. Now, this is a live display, and this unit's really parked on the board, uh, corner of Boardwalk and Park Place and has been generating uh, a lot of traffic just from people being like, huh, wonder what's in there, if nothing else. Um, so as a result, I've got the door left wide open on this. I may have to cut at some point if we get a handy little surprise guest or something like that. We'll kind of see how it goes. Um, well, as long as I'm pivoting around here, let's start at the front because uh, as Mary Poppins taught us, let's start at the beginning. That's a very good place to start. You do have a power shade integrated into that, uh, you know, Class B style forward overhead kind of uh, sweep back right there. It kind of looks like my balding forehead. It's all sort of, you know, skinned back and whatnot. But what I like about this is if you notice, like, you want it open, you want the light, fine, you got it. But if you don't want that light, like, there's no way for the sun to be able to kind of peek around and stab you in the eyes. I also really like right here next to the sofa, that little power pocket, a great little place like said, a, you know, a phone charge cable or anything like that, you know. Um, I tell you what, we're just going to do everything in all kinds of weird, backwards, not the normal order of operation stuff today. Pardon my coat hanging off the back of this nice chair right here. Let's check out the, the cab stuff. So again, we're on that Ford Transit chassis. One of the things I like about it is how much leg room it gives you down here, but it's really hard for me to kind of demonstrate that. So what I sort of did is I slid one seat all the way back and one seat all the way forward. And there's like a straight foot of difference in there. Interestingly, these seats are not the spin around kind of variety, but I do like that little kind of storage bucket that's down there under those. That's a handy little thing right there. And right over here by the door, you've got your BM Pro uh, Master Command Center. This is a system I personally really like. Um, you know, a lot of these smart systems, yeah, you can go through all the menus, you can push all the buttons, and that's cool. It does all the cool things. What I like most about it is how we still have like direct access things to like lights, to the power televator, to the slide, to the awning. You don't have to push all the, ooh, what did I put? Oh crap. <laughs> you don't have to push all the buttons, but that you can, you can also monitor all that from your phone. So if you want to see, are my holding tank heaters that this thing has activated? Uh, you know, you can, you can check all that right there or off your phone or whatever kind of works for you, obviously. Now, uh, up top here, I want to kind of point out the fact that despite the small size of this RV, count the number of air vents that you can see right there. You can see four, plus there's more over my head here, and they're double ducted. 
this little rig is going to get some fantastic airflow. And if you don't want to crank the full air conditioner, you can always just open some windows and with that sucker right there, get some really good cross breeze airflow. Now, the one regret I think I have with this RV is that they actually took the time and effort to do some kind of decorating on the, the Murphy bed wall over here. Because if I had my way, here's how I would decorate it. I've, I've, I've been trying to, you know, decorate my, my family's accent picture uh, wall in my house with that photo, by the way. My wife, I, I can't imagine why, wants absolutely nothing to do with that. But I said, Murphy bed. Let's take a little bit of a look at how that thing operates right there. What's kind of cool about it is this is a, uh, um, it's interesting, this has a power televator, but it has a mechanical Murphy bed. But that mechanical Murphy bed has a really crazy strong strut on it. So if you decided to kind of bulk up some mattressing a little bit, you could do that here. Now, laying down on it, it didn't, I, I didn't have to go get a measuring tape. I can tell you laying down on it, that's a short queen. Um, so thing is that's like really common in motorized RVs it's really funny that towable RVs tend to be best for big bedding which is really weird to me usually motorhomes tend to to, to overrule override them in just about any regard but not quite the case on this one so that might be an important factor for you um you may be able to like put a, a spacer block at the headboard area of the bed up there but it's it's always going to be a weird workaround, you know. Did you notice, by the way, the awesome campsite window coverage on this? And one of the things I like, right up here next to your entertainment, you've got a handy little wireless charger, which I think is very cool. But you might notice that funky little, uh, you know, shape sticking up off the countertop. I'm sure it didn't take a uh, brain scientist of some variety to realize... That's your power televator. Give me a quick little, you know, super fast forward speed motion example of that just to show you how that works. And again, you can control that off your phone via the BM Pro, or you can control that uh, uh, off the, uh, you know, control panel right by the door. And usually, like you see a switch buried in the cabinet, didn't see any of that here. I thought that was kind of cool. Now, I told you there's things about this coach I really like. And I said that there's some things that make me go, huh. That's kind of weird. One of the things I thought was a little bit weird is those radius uh, overhead cabinets that you're looking at. Those things don't have any sort of clip or latch. They're just spring loaded. And the reason I think that's kind of weird is you're in this RV going down the road and bouncing down the road. I'm wondering if it's going to be making that kind of sound the whole time. Now, to be fair, I'm finger flicking that thing pretty darn hard to the point that it's actually making my finger a little raw and I'm going to quit. Plus, it's probably loud and annoying. But my point is, I'm wondering how much noise that makes. So if anybody has any sort of experience with that that you can chime in on since I can't test drive this one, I'd appreciate hearing that. You may have noticed though, I don't know if you caught it, the, uh, the sink cover that goes in this. Did you catch how I actually was able to stuff that all the way in this cabinet here? And did you catch how these things hold themselves up so you don't got to juggle them with your head and did you catch that those are fully adjustable like there's some really cool good features going on over here no gas oven we do have a uh, gas two burner uh you know stovetop and convection microwave down there in roughly the oven location now one of the other things i thought was um interesting here is that is a 12 volt dc compressor fridge but it's a compact size and variety what's neat about it is you have a fridge on top and a freezer drawer down below. So it is a fridge and freezer separate, which I thought that was kind of a, kind of a cool little combo. You're starting to see these little fridges actually make some landfall um, in some totals. Like I saw Grand Design using some of those in the new uh, Imagine AIM series. Now for bathroom privacy, thankfully, you do have a locking sliding pocket style door technically not a true pocket door because it's not enclosed but close enough a sliding uh door here and i was a little surprised to see a plastic toilet that being said that could be exchanged and the leg room and hip and shoulder room around that was absolutely fantastic one of the other kind of things that made me go why i wonder why they went that way up in the living room they got the big fajita friday fume fighting fan but, uh, which is my name for the Max Air fans, but here in the bathroom, they don't. And I think a lot of people would say that's the best place for good airflow right there. 
Uh, that being said, I mean, it could be upgraded again. Actually, you know what? We're sitting here in the bathroom looking at the reflection in the mirror. You see that control panel with the red light and the blue screen? That's your tankless on-demand water heater control panel. So, uh, cool thing about this, you need to take a, a, a couple back-to-back -back showers. And uh, thankfully, nobody should have to be dealing uh, with the freeze on this thing. As long as you got a little bit of propane and 12 volt, you're going to have yourself hot water. And I really like the radius bar on that. So it gives you that extra elbow room where you really need it. Headroom was a little tight in here for me because it does have a, a little bit of a step up due to the plumbing under the shower pan. But, you know, that's kind of just one of those things that you just got to deal with, I guess, in this RV. Or, or don't buy it. Don't deal with it. I, <laughs> nothing says you have to. So, I always like to show you slide closed road mode. <laughs> a little bit embarrassed to say I'm literally unable to do that today. So this RV is sitting here in this display space. Now, every motorhome has a different series of hoops you have to jump through. Like some of them, you turn the engine on, some of them off, some you have the seat pulled up, all kinds of things. Well, it turns out this one, you actually have to have the engine running to operate the slide. Don't ask me how we did it. We got this RV in here and parked and ended with exactly zero gas in the tank. <laughs> and believe it or not, in an active RV show display, I don't have a gas can in my back pocket to do this. So unfortunately today, my apologies, I'm not able to get the slide closed in road mode for you. Trying to answer a question I think we might have though. Can you walk through it with the slide closed? Yes, absolutely. Also, can you put the bed down with the slide closed? No, you cannot. The slide was closed earlier today. I guess we had just enough gas to get it out, and that was it. I guess it was sputtering, and now it won't even start for me. So, again, apologies. Egg on my face, egg on our face. But we all learned something today about the slide system in this one, didn't we? Now, you know I love you guys, and you know that normally I'd prefer to give you the road mode Hong Kong horn test, but I think here in a... Uh, live display that would be frowned upon and i do tend to push boundaries a little bit i'm sure you can't imagine that i'm sure you cannot imagine i would be something of a button pusher and i don't mean just when i'm playing street fighter or something like that i mean when uh just in general but i don't feel like stirring the pot quite that much here so backing up here what are we looking at? Well, uh, obviously you see the whole Compass AWD. Now, I can't even spell that, but what that means basically is all-wheel drive here on the Ford Transit chassis. Just help giving you a little more power on the wheels, the proper ones, where you need them, when you need it kind of thing. Now, up front here, we uh, do have that 3.5-liter uh, EcoBoost V6 pumping out 310 horsepower. And like I said uh, when the video started, it's the most responsive, in my opinion, of the, the B vans, and keep in mind, I'm not like the, the hard authority on this, and um, I'll be the first to tell you, I don't have the greatest level of uh, you know personal knowledge and exposure on these, but I do try to test drive them where I can. Uh, again here, um, in the display, <laughs> a little trickier. Now, it seems like lately here, as uh, our lot's filled back up with inventory, so rarely do I have the chance to really like get awnings open like this. And I think the awning's one of the coolest parts on this RV because as a taller person, I get tired of ducking under stuff all the time. Now, I am kind of used to it. It does sort of become reflexive after a while, like Jason Bourne in a fight scene. Not quite that cool, naturally. But, I mean, not far off, obviously. You can imagine that. What I'm getting at here... Is this, I don't gotta worry about this one. It's not the kind of uh, awning where I'm gonna crack my noggin. And I do really like how they have the awning lighting set up on this one. It's not running along the base, it's not in the tube. It's actually right on the arms themselves, which I thought was pretty slick. Got a nice big entry handle to help you grab something coming in, coming out. Um, this RV actually has a uh, like a 12 year structural warranty and a six year lamination warranty, which I think is pretty sweet. You see you got the little ABS uh, side buckets where they can. That is one of the major things between a class C and a class A. C's just don't have the, uh, the skirt storage capacity that a lot of class A's have. So it's just one of those extra little things. Now sliding back here a little bit, you see you got that uh, Onan Gas 4000 generator, which is capable of running anything and everything in this RV, basically no matter where you park. So um, uh, let's say you just happen to unfortunately, you know, misjudge your time or you hit a traffic jam and you're not able to, to make it to your destination the way that you planned. 
This thing is gonna be like, you know, Walmart overnight Cracker Barrel Boondock kind of capable. The only like common courtesy caution thing I might offer you there is when you are doing that like sort of parking lot mooch docking boondocking overnight, some places get a little funky about you opening up the slide out. So you're gonna wanna kinda, you know, keep that under consideration there. Now, today you can see that we're indoors. We're actually at a uh, event that our Junction City, Oregon location was thrown over here, though by the time you watch this, that will have concluded by, by quite a bit. Uh, the thing though is this team locally probably has more motorized units, more motorized knowledge than almost anybody else within the entire Bishes organization, though we certainly have some very qualified people at other stores. My point here is like, if you wanna see like, what does this offer you versus like a Winnebago versus like a Jayco or whatever the case, They've got like all those brands right here. They have people trained on all those things who can give you clear, fair information on how each of them might benefit you in different ways and which one might be the best fit. And that's why we call them outfitters and not salespeople because uh, we're trying to just make sure that you're geared up with the right stuff basically. Now, uh, I'll leave you a link in the video description in case you're curious about pricing and availability on one of these. I'm sure at some point that'll be an important factor for you. And until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.